Hi, welcome to the App Codes channel on YouTube. Today we're going to do a tutorial on parsing XML data. Uh, this is going to be similar to a tutorial I did on my blog, but I've made a couple of improvements and fixed a, uh, a little bug in there that people had mentioned. So what we're going to do is we're going to parse some XML that gets returned when we hit our URL for my Twitter account. So if you plug in this URL, you get this XML back, and we're going to parse this out, and we're going to save the content of a tweet here, and we're going to save the date of the tweet. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to display those in our app. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new app here. Let me get Xcode fired up. Sorry about that. I should have had it started already. Okay, I'm going to create a new project. And we're going to select a single view application. And we're going to name it Parsing XML Tutorial. Add it to my source control. And let's go ahead and shrink the window so that you guys can see everything I'm doing. All right, there we go. Now, to start off with, I'm going to open up my nib file and create the user interface real fast. And all it is is a UI table view. So I'll put that in there. Set its data source and the delegate to the files owner. I'm going to open up the assistant editor. And I'm just going to hold down the control key and drag into my header file which is going to create my IB outlet for me tweets table view just like that okay that's all we need to do for our user interface and we're ready to go save those files now we need a object that's going to hold the content and the date of the tweet like I said our when we parse out our XML, we're going to save what is in this text node as the content and what's in this created at node as the date that the tweet was created. So we want to save those two pieces of information. So we're going to create an object that will hold that information. So we're just going to do a new file. It's going to be a subclass of Objective-C object and we're going to name this tweet. And now there's going to be a decent amount of code in this tutorial, so I'm going to be doing a lot of copying and pasting. So you don't have to type it all out while you watch. So this is the header file, and it's just got two NS strings, one for the content and one for the date created. Pretty simple there. Uh, let's go to our... Oh, did I put those in the wrong one? I sure did. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and copy that from the implementation file. Put in the header file. Now let's go to the implementation file. And all we're doing here is synthesizing those variables that we created, the content and the date created. Okay, and that's it for our object. It's pretty simple. The next thing we're going to do is create an object that does the parsing for us. And this is where all the work is really happening. Again, it's just going to subclass an object. We're going to name this XML parser. And here we go. Now the header file. Let's put all, copy that in there. And here, the first important thing we have to notice, first of all, first of all we import our tweet object and we extend this NS XML parser delegate. And when we do that, there's going to be three methods in our implementation file that we'll have to implement. And I'll show you those when we get there. Um, but we also are creating a NS mutable array to hold all of our tweets and our own method named load XML by URL. So that's going to be our own one and we'll implement that. So let me go ahead open our implementation file. Did I do it again? See, here's what happens when I 
do that, it opens both of them and it's showing me in the implementation file. Okay, so I copy that back into the header file, and that's where it should be. Now we'll open the implementation file and <clears throat> get the code into there. Okay, now here's our implementation file. We synthesize our array, which are the tweets. We're creating four variables here, one to hold the current node content. So this current node content mutable string will hold whatever we find in a node. So here's a created at node. It will hold that. If we were if we were looking at the ID node, it would hold that. In our text node, it'll hold this. So that is the current node content. And then we're creating a instance of our parser and an instance of our tweet object and then a Boolean that I'll show you what we're using the Boolean for here in just a minute. Now this is our custom method that we are that we declared and we are creating load XML by URL and it's going to take a string which is an actual URL and the first thing it does is just implements instantiates the four variables we created um, so it's the, de the delegate to the parser to ourself and it kicks off this method that starts the whole thing, starts the whole parsing process. Okay, now here are the three methods that we have to implement when we extend that um, NSXML parser delegate. So, the first one is found characters and that's pretty simple when we find characters in our file or in our XML feed we uh, create a new content node current content node and we just trim it and trim some of the white space nothing major going on there but the two important ones are this did start element and did end element the first one did start element we it goes through each node and looks for the starting let me fix this a little bit looks for the starting of that node starting element so for instance in our created at node, here's the starting element. And then this would be the ending element. And then in between it would be the actual content. So in our did start element method, it goes through each node and looks at the starting element. And we are in particular looking for the status node, which is right there, and then the user node, which we come down is right here. So when we hit the status node, it's going to create our current tweet, alloc the memory for it, and it's going to set our boolean to yes. And then it'll come down, it's going to read all of these, and when it hits the user node, it's going to set our boolean to no. And we'll see how that's used here in just a minute. So that's how this did start element worked. And then we get down to the dead in element, and it looks for the ending element of each node. So let's move this up here. It's going to look for, I created that, it's going to look for this. That's the ending element. If we were doing ID, it would look for that. That's the ending of the text. So, as it goes through each node, it finds the end element, checks our Boolean, and if our status is yes, which means we're in the status node, it's going to set the content in our tweet to the current content node. So when it gets to text, going to take this, the current content node, and it's going to put it in content. And then for the created at here, it finds the end element, takes the current content node, and sticks it in the date created of our tweet. Um, the order here doesn't really matter. It, may, it might make more sense if we switch these around like that since that's the order that they're coming in in the XML document, but it really doesn't matter. It's going to do the same thing. And then what happens is when it finds the end of the status L node, which is going to be down here, it's going to set, it's going to take that current tweet, it's going to stick it in the array of tweets, and then it's going to nil those out so that we can do the next one. Now, the reason we were using this boolean here is 
when I first did this tutorial in my blog, it was saving the wrong created at date. And that's because I hadn't looked close and realized that we have a created at date here at the status node level. And then there's another one at the user node level. Let's see, where is it? It's right there. And this one is actually the date that my Twitter account was created. So what it was doing is it was finding this created at node, setting the date in our tweet, then we come down and it would find the next one here and it would override it. So every tweet listed the date that the Twitter account was created. Well, we've changed that by using this Boolean so that if the Boolean ever gets set to no, it's not setting the created at date. So when the Boolean is yes, it uses the date comes down here, finds the user node, sets the boolean to no, and then it knows not to use this created at date. Okay. Whoops, didn't mean to save that. I want to save this. So that's it for our parser object. And the last thing we need to do is set up our view controller. And that I'm not going to talk about a whole lot because that's just uh, it's another topic. And um, we're really just concerning ourselves with the parsing process here today. So all it did was uh, import our objects and then this was over, it has our tweets table view. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our implementation of the view controller. Oops, I didn't want to open it. Let's go here. And here's the implementation of the object, of the view controller. Uh, we synthesize our variables, creating some variables here. Here are our table methods. Nothing exciting happening here. Uh, using our array to determine the count. I believe this um, URL, this Twitter feed returns 20, the 20 most, 20 most recent tweets and not more than that. Here we're just customizing the cell a little bit and adding the content. Um, this is where I fixed one of the bugs I was having in my other tutorial where um, some of the when you scrolled the table view and selected a cell some of the text was getting overlapped. And I did that by creating the labels inside this if block when we only create a new cell. And then uh, we use our view with tag to get that label and then we set the text in it. Again, that's a really a different topic so I'm not going to explain that too much. Uh, then we're just setting the height of the cell here. Um, and then the only other thing we did in the implementation file here is we created our XML parser object, allocated it, and called our load XML by URL method, passing in the URL of the Twitter feed. And then we created a uh, UI image of a logo that we're going to use to display. Uh, the rest of this I didn't touch, like straight out of the box. And really, that is just about it. I have to do one other thing here. I'm going to drag our graphic in there so we'll be able to use it, which is just the uh, Twitter logo. Now let's run it and see if it works. Our simulator selected. Keep our fingers crossed. Hope we didn't forget anything. And here we go. There it is. There's our uh, our Twitter feeds, and you see. We have the current date, I mean the correct date of when the tweet was created instead of the date that uh, my account was created, which was happening in my blog tutorial of this. <clears throat> and like I said, it only takes the last 20 tweets and displays them. And you can select it. It doesn't do anything, selection, because I haven't coded any of that. Uh, that's not part of this tutorial. But as you 
can see it's not overlapping the text, so it all looks good. Okay, and that's it for today. I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you want to see the code for all of this, I put it on the blog, so you can go here, www.theappcodeblog.com slash code slash parsing XML tutorial dot zip, and that'll give you the code of this tutorial, and you can dissect it line by line if you want. If uh, if this video was any was was it all confusing to you, maybe the just going through the code will help. Okay. Until next time, please come visit me at the App Code blog, and have a great day.